Welcome to the weekly poll! I'm Benny, one of your many hosts here. I read you comic books over on my channel, Comic Story, and dramatically, where I pretend I can do voices, but I'm really bad at it, and I have about three that I can actually do. <laughs> we have Sal from Comic Pop. He discusses your favorite comic books all the time, telling them to two people who don't understand comic books, which has now led to him getting even more obscure comic books to tell them about. <laughs> right. Not bad. <laughs> We have Rob who explains your favorite comic books and everything else in your life. We're trying to get Rob to explain the weird side of YouTube. He is currently denying that job. That's not going to happen. <laughs> nope. And we have our special there. guest, co-host. I don't really know where you fall into, but you come into a lot of the shows, so we're going to call your co-host, Jason sure. Inman of the Jawin Channel and DC All Access and the Kickstarter, Jupiter Jet. Would you like to fill in the new viewers about uh, the new viewers about your Kickstarter, Jason? Sure, yeah. Our Kickstarter is at jupiterjetcomic.com. It is a five-issue comic book series about a 16-year-old girl with a jetpack who flies through the sky, punching people with glowing eyes, and shooting ray guns. That sounds cool, doesn't it? And it's set in 1935, because who doesn't like a period drama? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's a really all ages fun comic book. It's my first comic book miniseries that I'm co-writing with my wife. So if you want to go over there, get some cool prints by uh, Nicholas Scott, by Tim Seeley from Nightwing, all kinds of cool stuff. Go over to JupiterJetComic.com, and I have a special offer. Anybody from the Weekly Pool, I'm telling you, if you go over there, you donate at JupiterJetComic.com, and you leave me a little comment or a message saying like, "Hey, I found you from the Weekly Pool," I'm gonna ship you a comic book from my own collection nice. with a handwritten note saying why I just think this comic book is so cool. So if you want that, jupiterjetcomicbook.com. Jupiterjetcomic.com. Don't put the book in there. <laughs> Only for the weekly cool people. All right, awesome. So before we can go to our topics today, which the big one's obviously going to be the Ben Affleck Batman thing, um, the ears are to prove that emotions work in the real world for Green Lantern science technology coming up on my channel soon. I just wanted to start wearing them. I'm not going to wear them the whole time. This does not work well with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I'm interested. <laughs> Are you, or did the batteries die? I don't know. The battery's going to die. <laughs> I probably should replace it before we actually did the shoot. So for those of you guys wondering, that's what this is. These ears <clears throat> allow you to read emotions. Um, but I also wanted to say, today's episode is also brought to you guys by the official Weekly Poll Discord. Uh, here's the link to that. You can chat with all the members of the Weekly Poll in between yeah. the episodes. Uh, we all get in there, we chat every so often, uh, some lovely guys are running that for us. Uh, you may know them as Mopey and Darkwing, They're, they've put this whole thing together, and now we're getting it uh, actually partnered. So that's another awesome thing. Cyborg yeah. Soldier says, the ears up, man, I was turned on. <laughs> <laughs> so, huh. that was one big thing we had to announce, and the second thing is, and Sal, I'll let you go ahead and take this announcement, since you have two things to announce with it, the bleeding cool thing. Oh yeah, right, right, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you so much to the Weekly Pull audience and, of course, to the Comic Pop audience as well, because both groups, that is to say the Weekly Pull and Comic Pop, are winners of uh, Bleeding Cool's 2017 Fan Awards. Uh, the Weekly Pull won Best Podcast and went up against some stiff competition, and Comic Pop won Best Web Series. So we can now uh, officially say that we are an officially... Uh, award-winning podcast. We're an award-winning podcast, and not only that, but we're the best podcast. Sorry, best. Jason, I, I know you also have a podcast, but at least you're on this one, the best <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Look, I'm still on both the two best podcasts on the internet, so it's all good. <laughs> we should Double make dipping. shirts. Double we should have shirts dipping. like number one dad, number one podcast. See? My shirt says number one. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> Funny side note, second place for best podcast was Sal's Elseworlds <laughs> Exchange. Yeah, and uh, basically the write-up for the Weekly Poll is like a commercial for the Elseworlds Exchange, which I'm like, <laughs> thank you. But, uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I am thrilled that we got this distinction. I, I'm just... Yeah, uh, no, I'm, I mean, <laughs> we've always made that ongoing joke, and I put it in the tagline of Twitch, best podcast on the internet. But apparently other people agree now. <laughs> yeah. Just full of yeah, it's stuff. nice to know. It's nice to be validated. <laughs> You should be, your new tagline should be like the weekly pool. Bleeding cool loves us. Yes, <laughs> bleeding cool approved podcast. Bleeding oh cool yeah, approved. there you go. Bleeding cool approved. I like that. A little Dude, stamp. I put it in my Twitter. I was like co-host of the award-winning the weekly pool podcast. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so is that now the official title of the award-winning weekly pool podcast? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we get like a trophy? Yeah. And if no. I get a trophy, the then the cool argument the internet. You just get applause. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm gonna order a trophy and say it's from this. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. 
All right, guys. So, I mean, that's just it. We wanted to go over a couple of little, like, admin kind of things. Go check out the chat room. Go uh, fund the Kickstarter. I did. I took the other Colin Bun thing. So, you definitely should. Both of you it, did, and I really appreciate it. Of course. No, well, I mean, the artwork looks amazing, and the story sounds good. I didn't just do yeah. it with the Cullen Bun thing. <laughs> really? Uh, Although. Hey, he's a cool dude. He's very. He's a very nice St. Louis living man. Uh, really quickly, I saw a couple comments in the chat. Everybody said, like, at what level? Um... At least five dollars or more, and I'll send you that comic book because, you know, come on, you're gonna, you don't want to put me in the negatives, do you? <laughs> right. <laughs> Three dollars, more like than comic. a dollar to mail it. Come yeah, there's been 400 <laughs> viewers right now. If every one of them did a dollar, you, you'd be sending off 400 comics. Their shipping yeah. would be more than you got. Yeah, right. I would be, I would be in the negative. <laughs> exactly. Besides, why wouldn't you want to buy the book? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Oh, is five where you get the book? No. It, uh, at like 15, you get a digital copy of the book. So. Okay. Well, because I remember when you first announced it, I was going to be like, well, I, you know, I like the art. I like the story. I'll get the one where I get the book. And then I saw the yeah. Cullen Bun thing, and I'm like, and now I'm paying a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> but you still get the book. I, yeah. But you get I was actually not going to lie. I was going to ask you that off the podcast. Do I still get the book? or do No, I just you do. You still get the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and talk about the big topic. We're not even going to waste any time. It's the big oh. thing. Ben Affleck is not going to direct the Batman movie. No. Oh, before we get into that, though, John Apocalypse. Sploo. Oh, okay. Okay. There you I was go. Like, did... <laughs> Rob's like, but I have another announcement as well. I, I thought I have, Rob I have had very like, inside information about Ben Affleck. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, uh, what is this? Um, but I do want to say this before people... we move forward to this discussion. This is for the discussion. I've seen a ton of rumors. Ben Affleck's not going to be Batman anymore. He's already quitting. Yeah. I've looked into these. There's no confirmation from DC or Ben Affleck about any of that. The only yeah. thing that they have said is that he's not going to direct. And then everyone and their brother is now running thousands of rumors mm -hmm. on everything from Forbes to Bleeding Cool about what does this mean. As far as we know, official wording is that it means he's not going to direct. That's it. But he's still committed to being in the movie. He still wants to be Batman. He still intends to write the script from what we're seeing. Everything else is on point. He basically just said, I can't do all three. It's too big of a project. Do you want to... Yes. Did you guys talk about uh, last week in the weekly pool that I unfortunately couldn't make it onto? Did you guys talk about like the new writer for the Flash script? No, we didn't get a chance to talk no, about that. No, we should have well, about that too. <laughs> I, here, here, here's my... This is what I think this all means. Ben Affleck not being the director of Batman and that new writer for the Flash means... Absolutely nothing. The movie's still going to happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like everyone's yeah. all like, it means. Yeah. Oh, it means it's going to be horrible, and what? It's going to be the end of the world, guys. Look, I love DC. Everyone knows that. I literally have them tattooed to my arm. Yeah. But <laughs> DC, while not horrendous movies, is not like Marvel Cinematic Universe level yet. So everything's yet. an improvement at the moment. So we're good. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. think you know. I actually, to be honest with you, I appreciate him stepping down because that means that he's like you know and, and, and he's a big batman fan like he's a yeah. big batman fanboy he built like a fake bat cave into one of his old houses that kevin smith now owns kevin smith yeah. talks about it all the time um <laughs> i appreciate that ben affleck was like look writing this is going to take me a long time playing batman is a lot of work i yeah. can't direct i can't direct this and make it a great movie no, i appreciate no, that he stood up and was like, I can't do this. Well, as I understand it, he's also he also lobbied to try and get like the suit to be more comfortable so that he could actually like direct and be Batman at the same time. Like yeah. there was this whole thing where he's like, because I just imagine and that was the thing that clicked for me, because I had this moment where I was imagining him being like, Where are the other drugs going? And then he's like, Okay, I'm gonna have to get everybody to come on, like, you know, and then try to direct while <laughs> being Batman. Well, and that's just it. Like him directing a mob period piece or whatever. He's in nice, comfortable suits. He can stage right. and do it. But this is Batman in the skin-tight yeah. well, Batman suit. Yeah. I mean, also keep in mind, this is Ben Affleck. It'd be different if it was just like some random guy. But Ben Affleck has enough juice that even if he's not directing, he's directing. Like, <laughs> if he comes along and says, hey, look, I would rather we do something else instead. Like, the new director, I mean, I doubt that he would, you know, we would be like, yeah, we'll just do whatever you want. But I'm pretty sure, Ben. I mean, as a producer, and even just as a well-respected actor, we'll probably have a pretty good amount of pool yeah. in terms of what it is that won't, you know, will and won't happen. That being said, if it turned out, it, I mean, if it were true that Ben Affleck wasn't going to be Batman, if if him backing out as director got this much, this much attention, the world would know that he wasn't going to be Batman. Like, there'd be no doubt about that. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. Plus, I have, I, a, you know, I, I have a feeling. I think, I think just... Ben. Oh, go ahead, Benny. Oh, no, you go ahead. Good. I, I talk well, about I was going to say, like, with as big a Batman fan as Ben Affleck is, 
I think we're gonna have to pry this role from his ke- his cold dead hands. I really, I think he's gonna be like Roger Moore, James Bond. Like he's he's gonna be like, I'm up for another one. I'm up for another one. Uh, we're gonna have Ben Affleck playing Batman until he's like in his late fifties. I mean, like th- then they can finally do the Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> yes, exactly. And Ben Affleck might be like, I'm not quitting until I get to do the Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I, but I was basically gonna say like everyone's all worried that he's gonna quit. Bad. Even let's just go ahead and say Ben Affleck is tired of being Batman for whatever the reason. I have a weird feeling DC, uh, um, WB is going to throw whatever they can at him to keep him on board in that role. Well, like, yeah. like, I don't see Ben Affleck just coming out being like, guys, I'm a little tired of it. And WB is like, okay, we'll get someone else. Thanks, Ben. And that's the end of that. You know, The yeah. fact is, well, for, real, him, <laughs> for him, uh, he's the one thing that everyone agrees is working about the DCE. Yeah, right? Yeah. And so Warner and, and that's actually kind of interesting because – it gives uh, it puts Warner Brothers in a difficult position because they because Affleck is very aware of this and they are now in a position where they kind of have to like give him what he wants because he's the one thing that is working. It's not like there's this one cinematographer that just rocks and it's like okay fine just make the movie look like that. Like no, right. it needs to be you have to satiate this one dude and his. Uh, his particular tastes and from what i've heard and, and take this with a grain of salt it's all rumors anyway but like the yeah. rumors about what this batman movie is going to actually be it sounds like it could be a movie that's made for like 80 million dollars and could be freaking awesome and make 600 million dollars like it could just fix everything yeah. um and Warner Brothers will have less of an impact than, let's say, they did on Suicide Squad, where it was like, Ayer's like, I want to make this little movie about these guys, and it's going to, you know, and then they were like, okay, but we have to meddle and change and alter and edit, and it just becomes something else. Whereas Affleck's like, you're not touching a frame of this movie, though, because yeah. if you want him to show up in Justice League 2, you're going to have to leave my Batman yeah. movie alone. <laughs> Well, yeah, like, that's, that's the, by the way, uh, Music Man 625, splooge. Um, nice. That's the, uh, that's, <laughs> no, that's, that's the crazy thing about it, is, is like, I didn't really care for Batman vs. Superman, but I thought Ben Affleck was great enough of a Batman that I was like, I'd go see a movie with Ben Affleck as Batman. Yeah, like, I'm I in. think he'd be a good Batman, yeah. Like, I, you guys I enjoyed have that whole Benny thing. so much, he ran away. Yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't he have the ears anymore often. to indicate silently to us what he was feeling. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree with you guys. I don't, I don't, I guess, um, you know, and I, I, this is from me living in L.A. And, and being in production and working so many production jobs like the changing of a director or changing of a screenwriter like literally means nothing because mm-hmm. al- almost every movie that's made goes through like six directors and six writers. It happens nice. on every single movie. Um, so this is just another thing of that. It, again, it just goes to um, Ben Affleck just being like, I'm too busy. Yeah. And, and I shouldn't and I shouldn't make a mediocre Batman movie. I will say, I Sorry about that. when when he was doing when he was running the circuit when he was doing all the interviews promoting Live My Night, which as it turns out was the first big flop of two, of 2017. Um, I remember everybody who got him in the interview chair was like, "And Batman," and by like the twelfth interview, he had lost any patience he had for not talking about his personal like crime drama. Yeah, and, I don't blame him. I don't blame either. It's like it'd be like making one thing and then being asked about the other thing. It just sucks. Well, but, it'd be uh, like if I spent this entire podcast asking you guys about the Elseworlds exchange. Right. It, people would be <laughs> like, then you'd be like, well, the show's over now and uh, Sal is fired. <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, and I, I feel for him and I could, but I could see him getting like sick enough of it to be like, like, is this going to be my life now? You know, like, despite mm-hmm. the fact that I'm Ben Affleck, like, I was the Goodwill Hunting kid until I wasn't. Am I going to, are my latter years going to be, like, when's the next Batman movie? Am I going to have to put up with this shit for the rest of my life? Yes, he will. Uh, yes, but uh, but I think that I, I could see him getting, like, frustrated enough to walk away. Like, that's the thing, yeah. is that I, I, don't exp- I don't think this move indicates he's going to leave the role. But I do see Affleck being like, I make enough, I'm talented enough, and I have enough clout that I could walk away at any minute. And I think that that is like a cloud that will be ever present any time that Warner Brothers mm-hmm. is working on a movie with Batman in it. Well, let me throw this out to you, to all three of you guys. Um, we know that Affleck is not going to be the director of this movie. Who who would who would be your dream pick? Who do you want? Oh. They they put out they put out a couple other names. Um, I forgot what they were. I'm sorry. I'll look them up. Yeah, I know. No, I would um, love to hear that. 
I was actually just looking that up a second ago. Um, so Matt Reeves is one of the guys they're pegging to direct. And of course, like yes. one of those more, uh, his movie right now is War for the Planet of the Apes. Before that, it was Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. He directed uh, Cloverfield. Um, and then you've got Gavin O'Connor. His most recent movie was The Accountant. Now, let me tell you something, man. Like, have you guys seen The Accountant yet? I have. No. I loved it. Dude, it's it so great. good. Oh, it's so good. It's so it it has that like boy, the town so kind of watch, isn't it? Yes, the accountant I'm is extremely that, good. I, everything you guys are mentioning um, that I, I want to look at when we're done with the podcast, <laughs> I'm pulling up in a tab and I'm like, look at this, look at this. <laughs> oh, Matt, dude, no, Matt the, Ross is also on the short list, and his most recent movie was Captain Fantastic. But he's also yeah. directed. Uh, um, uh, but no, he he was also like an actor from a long time ago. But yeah, his his most recent movie is Captain Fantastic, mm-hmm. the Viggo Morrison movie. Yeah, and and between, I mean, just just between that, I mean, right there, you've got a solid director lineup. So it's not like it's going in the hands of like Zack Snyder. I mean, it's not like it's just going to some arbitrary person's okay, hands okay. that has no Zach business Snyder's making a movie. Zack Snyder's not that but, bad. If we want, no, but he's but he's I, bad I, enough. Yeah, to be honest with you, if they announced Zack Snyder as the director of the Batman, I kind of I I wouldn't like revolt or anything like that. I, no, my only thing one. is about going for like. Well, he's been asking for it forever. Like that's yeah, the thing he's but, been well, working towards. My I thing would about not, Matt, my thing about Matt Reeves. Um, with because uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is that he took what is already a very silly concept, and I love those the new Apes trilogy. I think it's fantastic, and I'm really excited for War. Um, so I, I he would be my pick simply for the fact that I know he can take something silly and make it great. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think it would it would work out well. I mean, honestly, my pick would be Gavin O'Connor, and the reason why I would say Gavin O'Connor is because he seems really good at making movies that are like paced out. That are that are kind of slower, but like I'm a stickler for movies like No Country for Old Men, stuff like that, where they're like they're lengthy and they have a really really good story and not a whole lot of action happens. The problem is if we got a Batman movie like No Country for Old Men, it would be boring as shit. So like <laughs> <laughs> people would be like, this movie sucks. Like it'd be so boring. Um, I mean that, that, that looked like to... what they were going for with Logan. Like hey, we're gonna spend an hour going in the countryside reflecting, and then we saw the trailer with X23, and you're like, okay, I feel better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was. It was. It's gonna be. You know, it's gonna have a good action. But now, I mean, between those those directors right there, like honestly, I would take any any one of them. But to your question, uh, for a dream director, if I could pick anybody, I'd pick Martin Scorsese to direct a Batman movie. Huh. Like I would grab him yeah. if I could get away with it, just based on Shutter Island. I, yeah. I see. I would. I that's an interesting choice, but I think Martin Scorsese would make a boring as shit Batman movie. I'm not the only one, then, Jason, because he said that, and I'm like. <laughs> Okay, well, you know. I mean, he's a Rob. He's a great director. So, like, yeah, in a, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll make you. I'll one up you. Like, I'll say, I'll say, uh, Martin Scorsese from '98. I would love to see make a Batman movie. <laughs> yeah, not today's Martin Scorsese. You don't, you don't want Shutter Island, Martin Scorsese. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. No. Like, Shutter Island's amazing, but there's definitely like an hour in the middle of that where you're like. I can take a really long pee break, and I don't think I'm gonna miss much. Oh, what was, okay. what's his new movie? Silence. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've heard it's really boring. I've, I haven't well, seen it, but I've heard a lot of people it's say it's awful. really boring. There's a lot of reasons why that movie is bad. Is it? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> then, then let me ask you about this. What about like Steven Soderbergh, guy directed the Ocean's movies? Like oh, he, that'd be he would bring some crazy. I'd like to see him do a that. team book because the dude can juggle a cast. Like I would yeah. rather see Steven Soderbergh do like an Avengers movie. <laughs> oh, dude, that would be so good. Or no, just do, like Batman, Superman. Like yeah. this, this, like Batman Superman. Yeah. See, yeah. Steven Soderbergh yeah. is my pick to do really? a like a uh, Matt Fraction, David Aha Hawkeye movie. Oh, oh dude! Imagine that. Yeah. Oh my god, dude, that'd be so I, fun. If they ever do that, I just want the dog sequence to be in there. Oh the yeah, the dogs running through and no one understands anything, and the dog's just doing its own thing. Yeah, what, what, was, what was that dog? What was it? Pizza dog? Is that what pizza it was? Dog. I think, yeah, I think yeah, they yeah. ended up calling him. Yeah, yeah. They named him Pizza Dog Two when he got a second dog. <laughs> <laughs> you can't name him Pizza Dog Two. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. I would. Oh my god, I would watch. I would watch the hell out of that. Like a like like a uh, Clint Barton, Kate Bishop, Hawkeye mm-hmm. team up movie. That would be awesome. Yeah, he really thought. Ah, dude, Jason, he's got like all the best ideas over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Batman, Dream Director. That's a t- that's a really tough one because you got to have a guy that like can handle like darkness and, a- but he's got to be able to hand action adventure. You know, Rob, your choice for the guy who directed the accountant. I man, I'd be to- if he got announced as uh, doing the job. He's got a relationship with Ben Affleck. He's proved he can make a solid action movie that actually has a story. I'd be totally behind him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'd be pretty, pretty, pretty. I've got, solid. I've, got a, I've got at least three directors that I think I, I would, would would really work. 
Um, two of them are older, and one of them's more new. Uh, I would go with either A History of Violence as David Cronenberg. Ooh. Oh, yeah, there you go. Because a dude choice. can make violence look awesome, and also yes. dude is a consummate act, like a director. Um, I would go with the obvious choice, which is David Fincher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and seven would make a especially if it is. I'm I'm picturing directors who is who are going to make this movie that I've heard is the movie, which is the rumor is it's Die Hard, but it's Batman. That yeah. would be amazing. The rumor is that would that it's Batman like trapped in Arkham Asylum, so you get to see all the villains, but he doesn't deal with them all. It's basically like oh. a serious house on a serious earth. And Cronenberg or Fincher be amazing, and if you can't get either of them, then I go with Pete Travis who did Dread. Wait, where did you hear this? And like, how? Did oh, that's a good choice. Joke? That's a good choice, the Dread guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can see. I mean, like, well, we've heard, we've heard Deathstroke. Uh, yeah. Well, I, from what I understood, Deathstroke was the villain. You know, that, that was. Could be, yeah. Well, yeah. it could be that, like, maybe Deathstroke is gonna like, like, locks him in Arkham and he's like hunting him or something like that. I'm well, just so happy well, that it's gonna be Deathstroke because I'm so freaking tired of the Joker popping up in every goddamn Batman movie. No, no. no but here's they, were some, they were shooting some footage of Deathstroke during Justice League, so <laughs> they were. Uh, um, uh, Joe Mantella, Mantella, blah, 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 how do you say his name? Yeah, I can't. Uh, he, me. <laughs> he came out. He came out and confirmed he confirmed on twitter that that deathstroke footage was his costume test oh Oh. now whether that was you know whether deathstroke is to be in justice league i i'll be very surprised if you don't see deathstroke in justice league i yeah it's it was yeah it was around the same time that they were filming that movie and and it'll be a cameo but -hmm. like why wouldn't you do that too but yeah. yeah, he claimed on Twitter, like, he, he was like, this is a costume test that we did for Deathstroke. That was where that weird footage came from. Right. Yeah. Um, back to Sal's point about David Fincher, like, you like you brought up the movie Seven. Like, yeah. could you imagine that scene, like, with Kevin Spacey when they're riding out to the desert? You know, uh, he's going on that whole spiel. Like, could you imagine, like, Batman and the Joker? Yeah. Like, dude, that'd be incredible. That'd be That's incredible. Is, mm-hmm. Well, if, if, it, if you put Batman in Arkham Asylum and you got David Fincher making that scene, you have a Joker scene. You've got a Scarecrow scene. You've got a Killer yeah. Croc scene. You've got a Mad Hatter scene. You Any character you want to do. You could have a Kite Man scene and it would be amazing. Kite Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kite Man. <laughs> I love what saying, Tom man. King is doing what with a, Kite Man. So... I, got, I, just, I love what he's doing with that. <laughs> Yeah, the recurring joke of Kite Man, yeah. yeah. <laughs> two two seconds si- uh, sideways track, whatever you want to call it. Did anyone yeah. see the image that t- uh, Tom King t- uh, tweeted out about the next story arc for Batman? Uh-uh. No. It was Joker. I mean, I oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, he tweeted out Joker's his next arc. Yeah. What? That's They're surprising. finally addressing that. Thank you that's so right. much. Well, he's supposed to be the guy who's dealing with the three Jokers. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that makes sense. It just, well, it's about time they got him All it was was an image of Batman punching Joker. So, I mean, it yeah. could be a flashback <laughs> or something, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. I believe it was I him. They... It was either him or, or the artist. In yeah, no, it's him. It. I'm looking at it right here because the tweet says, coming soon, Batman punching the Joker in his stupid face. In yeah. the end, the good guys win. Spoilers. Right. <laughs> well, the good guys yeah. are the Joker. Yeah, I really I hope say, he got permission to tweet that out, and DC wasn't like, "Whoa, no!" <laughs> I I would imagine he got permission. I I know uh, I know a couple of publicity people over at DC. Clark Bull is one of them. He's a really really cool guy. Um, yeah. yeah, he would he he probably he had to make sure. Yeah, that's, that's probably not something you just tweet out like, "Oh, I'm gonna be using Joker, guys." No, Tom, what is wrong with you? <laughs> well, it's not, it's not something you should tweet out you. if you want to be writing Batman very long. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he gets some. He gets some Fincher pencils. He's like, "These are just so cool. I'm just gonna tweet them out." Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's drop that. spoilers for the highest selling DC title. <laughs> 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 oh man, I, I feel like this David Finch guy. He he needs a lot of help. I'm gonna help out his Twitter account, and maybe people will get to know who he is. Look, you yeah. that man. <laughs> yeah, wow. but uh, but yeah, man. Uh, I I want to see a really really solid Batman movie. I I I want to see like a quiet but awesome Batman movie. I want to yeah. see. I, I would like to see what we had in Batman Begins, but in a realistic Batman world, not a realistic world take on Batman. I want to yeah. see like. That dark, that moody, that character, you know, that kind of a thing, but in a Batman world where villains yeah, I, have got like croc phases and stuff. Where Killer yeah, Croc could exist. Yeah. I really want it to be a, like a mystery. I really want uh, this, yeah. I really want this Batman movie to be, and I don't know how you're going to do it with Deathstroke, but maybe you can some, somehow. Yeah. Um, I really want it to be like this detective mystery because we haven't had that in any superhero movie so far like a a, a really really involved like imagine like you brought up fincher imagine the mystery of gone girl applied to a superhero yes oh my god who was it that directed um the place beyond the pines i don't know 
Dude, uh, that movie was super good. That one had like Bradley Cooper and had um, Ryan. Uh, David O. Russell. I don't know. Maybe it was. But no, okay. See, but see, here's Derek okay. C. in France. I don't now, know. if if we were going to extend this out, I would say Ridley Scott, 1982, Blade Runner. I would oh, take oh, him. Oh. Dude, directing a Batman wow. movie, that right. would be insane. I yeah. would love that. Maybe not today. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, it definitely would have to be not today. It would have to be hungry uh, Ridley Scott, not uh, yeah. not alien. Yeah. Not comfortable visited. Ridley Scott. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing well. If this fails, I don't really care. Yeah, post, mm-hmm. post Gladiator Ridley Scott is not my favorite Ridley Scott. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of rough. But yeah, so I mean, regardless, I mean, everybody's kind of uh, shooting for the movie. And even then, like I said, you know, if, uh, regardless of what director we get, I mean, I think, I think you know, Chase is right when he says that, like, DC looks around. Was it, was it Jason or was it uh, Sal that was talking about, like, you know, people looking at Batman and saying, like, it's the one great thing going on in the, oh, the DC? Oh, yeah, it's Sal. Yeah, yeah, Sal. So it's like the one great thing going on in the DC. And so no, I, I imagine it's true. Sal, I'm pretty, yeah, I say, I'm pretty sure that that's like unanimously. Yeah. That's what everybody's saying. Yeah, yeah. It's been so I, I, is the best part yeah. of it. Which is funny with how much shit for almost a year he got that he was going to yeah. be Batman. Where everyone's yeah. like, no! Not for me. <laughs> Not for me. I was calling that as soon as they announced it. <laughs> yep. You, you go look at my channel. There's a video I made that I was like, I think Ben Affleck will be awesome. You can find <laughs> it. It's crazy. Yeah. Everybody yeah. called me crazy, and I was like, he's an Oscar winner. He's not going to screw this up. Right, yeah, he's not yeah. going to come in and be like, ah, no matter what, I'm this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But no, I mean it's. It, I mean that's and it's funny how fast opinions can change. Like it's like people people will turn on a dime because all it takes is a great performance. So people were, like who would who could have imagined Chris Evans is like Captain America? Not the guy me. was the Human Torch. No I one would have sat down and said, "Oh, Chris Evans is going to be a great Captain America." Now I can't see anybody playing him besides yeah. Chris Evans. He you know, the same it. thing with Tony Stark. You know, all those characters. It's like, damn, I can't see anybody. Even you know, right right now with um, shit, but I can't remember his name anymore. Got to play Superman. Yeah, what is his name? Henry Cavill. Uh, Henry Cavill. Henry, Henry, yeah, Henry Cavill. I can't see anybody else playing Superman besides Henry Cavill now because I love the way he uh, played the character. I, I can see about four or five other people playing Superman. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I no, love I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you, Rob. Like Henry Cavill is like the perfect Kurt Swan Superman. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I, and I actually agree with you on that one. I would like his direction to be a little different, but as far as we're going with like the image and the way he's portrayed him so far, when he does it right, he is Superman. I like that. Yeah. I like the way he does it. I'm looking yeah, forward to seeing that someday. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's never done it. He's, he, once when he smiles for when he smiles and it's not ironic or like mean, then I'll then I'll be down. <laughs> He'd be a he great fly, He smiles when he flies with the zebras oh, and man yeah, that's steel. Right. You would smile if you flew with zebras as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not Superman. Superman's like, "Woo, I have amazing powers and I'm super great and having a terrific time." No. Superman smiles when he's saving people. He smiles when he's like assuring people that they're going to be okay. He doesn't wait, wait. Smile I'm going like, to put you on the spot here, Sal. So, so you're saying that if you fly with zebras, even if yeah. you're Superman, you cannot smile? I call oh. bullshit. I'm saying that that is your only example of him smiling. And I'm saying that anytime he is dealing with humanity, anytime he, yeah, okay, that's fair. He smiles with zebras, but when, he's, when, he, when he hangs out with a single human being, unless they're having sex with him, he doesn't smile. Unless you have a sexual relationship with Superman, or you're a you're a weird horse. And look, I'll just say I'd have sex with Superman, Superman, man. I mean, that's, that's I, oh, I, dude, I mean, yeah. if Henry Cavill walked up him. to me on the street and said, "Let's go get yeah. that bathtub," I'd say yes. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, there's a small Let's list of guys man. that I would just go gay for, and <laughs> Superman is on that list. <laughs> look, his hunk factor is over nine thousand. I'm just saying that he doesn't smile as Superman, and it's frustrating. Because I like Brandon Routh the Superman. That was my. I was like, oh, this guy's great. And then everyone was like, this is garbage. Get out of here. No, he wasn't a bad Superman. The writing was bad for the for Superman Returns. Like that was that was the issue with that. The writing I think was a great part. Correctly, Lois Lane was great. Perry White was great. Jimmy Olsen was great. Superman was great. Lex Luthor was great. Everything about it looked great. It had great CG, great special effects. The problem was it was boring. And had yeah. a little kid in it, and it followed the wrong. It got the wrong damn lesson. And yeah. just, I'm not it saying Jonathan Kimball for Jonathan saying, Kimball. Yeah, like you, know, I, you know, Sal, I'm with you, dude, for Superman Returns because that movie has like everything going for it except the story. And if yes. and if Brian Singer had made any other movie besides the fifth sequel to the Richard Donner movie that yeah! we didn't need, it would have worked. Yeah. No. If he was, and we would have gotten a franchise out of it. I think so. Yeah. I think there's no question. I mean, like, I think I heard I heard this, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard that they had been talking to Brandon Routh about 
portraying Superman as a postscript to the Green Lantern movie back when they were spending $275 million on a Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. Wow, I did not hear that. It's crazy. I, that. I don't oh. know if that's true. We, that movie but, doesn't exist. There's no Green Lantern movie. That's right. No, no, this, no, 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 this coming, mask. No, Benny, no, no. But Benny, you want to know, you don't you know, don't know fun you don't you know a fun fact? You know, you know who lost uh, the role of Superman to Brandon Routh? Barely. Henry Cavill. That's funny. Really? <laughs> you can go. You can go YouTube. You can YouTube. You can find his screen test for Superman Returns. It's and okay. it's Henry Cavill. Hey, maybe he'll be a better Superman. I don't know. You yeah. know what I do? I, I, yeah. That's fine. I'll check that out. I mean, that'd be a great way to bring him back. Just be like, I died, and now I have an appreciation for life. Go life! I'm yeah. Superman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Zebras. <laughs> Zebras. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, in all honesty, I mean, I, I, I like you know. Uh, back to the to the Batman thing. I mean, I'm I'm really digging where they're going. The, the only issue that I have with this is it feels like with Ben Affleck, they're kind of throwing all their eggs in one basket, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But in all honesty, truth uh, truth be told, if I had my way, I mean, Justice League is cool and everything. I want to see Justice Society. Like, I want to see like I want to see Jake racing. Eric. No, 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 no. I want to see some Justice Society stuff. On I mean, the that's you. Yeah, you, well, you do that after you do the Justice Well, as League. amazing as that but would be, I don't really see that ever happening. I mean... Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I do. Well, I mean, actually, Alex actually, Scott that... up in here. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, people, dude, people said the same thing about Black Widow. Why the hell would they put Black Widow in a movie? Like, why would they? Why would she be on the because service? Because Marvel screen? only has, like, three female leads. I mean, that's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, they, and, they yeah. Made, and they made it work. Okay, let me ask you this. Like, 15 years ago, would you have said that there would ever be a chance that you would see Iron Man in a movie? Of no. all people, Iron Man. And it's one of the best movies that Marvel's put out, so and one of the best characters they have. They do the now. Society in the movie screen, they're like, "Here's the other Flash, the other they, Green they Lantern." The yeah, other. <laughs> they they know who he is now. They knew who he was in Civil War. I don't know. I don't know. You're reaching. I think you're reaching. I don't think so. No, I don't think I'm reaching at all. Uh, I, I I'm kind of the same way. I don't know if we'll ever. I, it'll be. A, I think it's a ways down the road before we see JSA. I think. But you know what? I'll tell you what. I would not be surprised at all. If in the next five years we get a JSA TV show, yes, I yeah, would see that. Probably. Yeah, you practically got one in Smallville. Uh, yeah. yeah, and we practically got one in Legends this season too. That's right, we got one in yeah. Legends season two, and the characters are popping up in Flash. We have Jay Garrick and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it'll be you'll sooner see the Crime Syndicate than you'll see the JSA in a movie. That would yeah. be actually, that actually well, that be, would be amazing. That would I be would, amazing. I'll see that Justice League movie. Hey guys, didn't you like Justice League? Well, here's an evil version of them. It's like, yeah. That like evil Superman one. doesn't like zebras. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he beats up zebras. In, he's like, "Fuck you, zebras!" <laughs> yeah. like, I like horses. <laughs> you're just horses with stripes. Go away. <laughs> you're undomesticatable horses. They're you're broken. <laughs> <laughs> you're broken horses. You don't even neigh like horses do. Like, get yeah, out of here. Like scary sounds, and I can't ride you. That's you can't stupid. even camouflage well. You have to go to a painted fence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You suck, zebras. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now that we're ranting about zebras, yeah, like, what are the, the other topic topics that we have? We're, we're talking Welcome. about zebras. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, I, I don't even know if it's the next one. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about Cloak and Dagger. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm actually kind of excited about this. Uh, I'm actually, I mean, I know, I know, I know it's, it's a Marvel ABC. <laughs> but I think yeah, it'll it's be freeform, cool. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think, I, I think it'll be cool. Where, where on that channel, they bleep the Gilmore Girls. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's serious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Freeform. Okay, yeah. so, so it, there's that ABC, which is the family friendly, but Freeform is the <laughs> really family friendly network. Yeah. It's ABC Family Family. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, it's gonna it's gonna be like Disney Channel presents Cloak and Dagger, but well, yeah. I'm just glad that the we're getting cast, some kind they're of. They're young, okay. and Cloak and Dagger yeah. are not li- young like that. Well, the like, chick is a former Disney Channel star. That's what I mean. It's, it's gonna be like <laughs> Cloak and Dagger, the teenage years. <laughs> they started out as teenagers. <laughs> I mean, I'm just glad to see him get some kind of representation. Like, I'm hoping at least it's something a little bit bigger, something a little bit better. I mean, I, I, I don't want this to be, like, the last stop of Cloak & Dagger. That said, it is on ABC. It probably will be the last stop of Cloak & Dagger. <laughs> I don't... Yeah. I, I predict that Cloak & Dagger won't even make it to series. I think it's going to be... Think so? I think they're going to do the pilot, and I think they're going to go, nah. Oh, I don't I mean, know. When, when I first saw the announcement, I was excited because I was like a dark and gritty Netflix cloak and dagger. This will be amazing. In and a heartbeat. Like, Freeform, this is going to suck. <laughs> yeah, no, Net- yeah. Netflix is where you put them. Netflix I, is where you throw yeah. them in. And yeah. you have, maybe have them cross over with Daredevil. And they maybe work you- in that universe, too. Yes, yes easily. Definitely. Yeah. No, no that being definitely said. Could. Well, because, I mean, every portrayal of them is like a middle road. Like, they're trying to be good guys, but they get stuck doing bad things. I mean, their last appearance was in Amazing Spider-Man where they were being controlled by Mr. Negative. So, yeah, that was a solid book. 
bad. <laughs> It was a nice uh, plot. <laughs> cheer, cheerful, <laughs> cheerful, Sal is cheerful. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not no. going to pretend. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're aware, Sal, that you won't pretend ever. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. no I, I understand where Sal's coming from because it will. Because, because I mean, I, I, granted, you're not the biggest Cloak and Dagger fan ever, but like, if you have like Cloak and Dagger, I, I appreciate yeah. their their value. I think that yeah. most people write them off. Most folk are like Cloak and Dagger. Why would you start there? And it's like. Well, they're teenage. They're teenage runaways, and they have, uh, you know, and they have a lot of pathos. And and there, there's two characters that need each other. And during a time in Marvel when it was like the '80s, early '80s, there was this like interracial couple, and that was kind of cool. Like now, it's like who cares? But you know, <laughs> they're, you know, they're... but Cloak and Dagger. There's enough interesting things to their storyline that you could make a great television show. You could make a great television show with them not even being connected to the rest of the Marvel Universe, where they're yes. their only heroes. They really work, but yeah, you are right. The, the place where this is ending up is the problem, not the series. Yeah. yeah. This could yes. be a good so... show on Netflix. I would even go as far as to say, put it like after Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so that airs 9, and then you have Cloak and Dagger at 10, and you would have yeah. a good, a, a solid show, and sure. you can get people in from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You don't put it on Freeform. That's like no. whatever, that's like the uh, which I think I think is still technically going, but like the Titan show going on TNT. Why? Why is it going there? <laughs> Who's doing that? <laughs> At least TNT they can say ass. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know. I mean, Jeff Loeb is the one that's running that, and I wouldn't be surprised if somebody went to Jeff Loeb and said, "Hey, man, we really want to do a Cloak and Dagger show." He's like, "Well, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Get somebody else to do it. I'm not doing Cloak and Dagger. That's crazy talk." Yeah, it's like, it's <laughs> it's you know people forget like like Jeff Loeb, you know, being in charge of Marvel to be like. Dude has a preference for characters. He wrote them. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He loves characters that he wrote, which is why I'm surprised we haven't seen Red Hulk yet. But I guess the whole universe. Oh is man, Red I, Hulk. I get. I bet we'll see a Red uh, Hulk. Dude, I the, really like, want to see Red in, Hulk in the MCU. I bet we I do. Mean, I mean, well, like, what's her name? Betty Ross William Hurt. Put him back in the movies. Dude, that, Betty you know, Ross and I think the reason why Infinity they put War. William Hurt in that movie is for Red Hulk. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't doubt that at all. Like. But let me ask you this: Do you think William Hurt's up for that? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, well, well he's, think he's, about he's, it. He can just voice the character. He just yeah, voices yeah. the character, yeah, like Iron yeah. Man style, like they're doing a Tony. And then Stark they'll hire freaking Andy Serkis, yep. and he'll mocap the damn thing. <laughs> and because uh, it's that's that's what they do. They're like, oh, we need a guy put Andy Serkis in the freaking thing and make him do it. I don't know, but, like, <laughs> no, I think, and I think having Red Hulk would inject like some fresh blood into the mcu which we we as much as i love it like we kind of need that we need right something now. with the <laughs> forget it. trust <laughs> me you're gonna be we're upset gonna talk about a tangent do something with the goddamn i spit on myself do they something can't. with the goddamn hulk <laughs> they can't man Slider they don't have the, they don't have 100 rights for the hulk movies that's yeah why getting, that's why thor ragnarok is basically planet hulk <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah because the only way hulk? they could do planet hulk and not have to pay universal yes yeah. oh it's the universal still has it huh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah, they still they have like to. a co. They have like they have a, a, they they have a pre MCU like equivalent of the Sony Marvel deal now. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. All right. Oh what's God. next? Cloak <laughs> and Dagger's dead. Next topic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so so this is the X Men TV pilot. Yeah. Legion. Uh. Yeah. We're we talking about Legion. Okay. Man. Let me. Man. Let me tell you something. No. No. There's Watch another show too. No. There's another uh, show. Oh. Okay. Well, all right. Here's the deal. So, so I was thinking about doing like I thought about doing Legion to like get prepped for it, mm -hmm. and I was I was sitting there looking around. I was like, okay, we got we got Iron Fist, which is coming out. So I'm doing Matt Fraction's Iron Fist because that's infinitely more interesting than Legion. Uh, yeah. We have like Wolverine. I was like, there's a million more interesting things coming out than really? Legion. But I was like, you know what? Maybe I could find a spot for it. So I sat down and I, what was it? Uh, like X Force, whatever that. There uh, was it New Mutants where Legion got his New own. Mutants. Yeah, New Mutants. Yeah. And yeah. I was I was going through that and I was like, dude, this. I am not making videos on this. Like, I am not doing videos <laughs> on Legion. Now, I thought about doing one on, uh, was it Age of X? The one where he, like, warped reality? Okay, yeah. Like, changed mm -hmm. all existence? That I thought about doing, because it's just like a one-shot story, which I may end up doing in time for the TV, just to kind of, I mean, because Legion's kind of cool in his own right, but I don't know why they chose Legion. He's like the guy, Legion is like the one-hit wonder. Like, he did one thing cool, and, like, like he just set the stage for Age of Apocalypse. And it's, it's like, because... yep, that's what Legion did. They chose him because it's the same thing like this other Fox t X Men TV show, uh, where the whole concept is about this human parents are just going on the run with their mutant child from the government. Mm -hmm. It's because 20th Century Fox 
is weird. They're so old school. They yep. will not let you do the X Men or any part of the X Men in a TV show. So I, there's basically like selling out these concepts by being like, look, you can't make an X Men TV show. So just make like. The janitors of the X Men universe <laughs> will put an mm-hmm. X in the title. People will think it's an X Men show. Yep. Yeah. No, that's that's exactly what it is. It's 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 kind of silly. Like it's when they were touring around with the idea with like the Hellfire Club. Like, what are you gonna do with the Hellfire? Oh, man. Like, like, yeah. like like season one will be the Hellions and then nothing else. Like, <laughs> they, like they, they, well, they li- the, hey, honestly, honestly, I will say this: that's doable because Jessica Jones was one season was pretty much the entire good story. And now we They're, have nothing, but we have a yeah, season coming. It's a great show. It's a great book. They didn't even do the mutant girl story. Like, there's a lot of story left for Alias. And if they no, wanted to, they no, moving on. We're going to do the new Jessica Jones series that just came out. <laughs> well, you know the, cra- uh, the crazy. Uh, disagree with you, sir. The craziest thing about all of this is that there are plenty of X Men ideas that I think could work on TV, and they just keep avoiding them and staying away from them. Because, like, think about this: if there is one thing Legends of Tomorrow has proved to me. It has proved that a cable jumping through time protecting little baby Hope <laughs> series would work. Oh, dude, let me tell you That'd something, man. If they, if they, dude, they did Messiah War as a TV show. I would watch yeah. the hell out of that. Yeah, I would yeah. just be like, yes, let's do this, man. Could literally, you could just muck with Bishop and make it so yeah. like Bishop shows up and he's just like, I don't like. I need to find Professor Xavier and nobody knows who he is. Like yeah. he just doesn't know the X Mansion starts in Westchester and he starts in like California. That yeah, way they Bishop can shoot time him. Cop. Boom. Yeah. Think of a time cop. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. It would. It would be. It'd be kind of cool. See, but the problem. See, here's the problem the Fox has right now, though, because I was thinking about making uh, doing something about this by the time Logan comes out. Is no one knows where. Well, if you know where to go, you know where it stands. But like the average person doesn't know where anything stands. Like, well, you had Days of Future Past with Redcon stuff. Then you had X Men Apocalypse. But now you've got Wolverine's origin. Okay. Well, how did Wolverine get his item? And it's just like it throws everything off kilter. Yep. And so people go into this, and they're like, okay, we get the, like, that's the number one search. Like, when does Logan take place? Like, yeah. where does this fit? And the, the director had to come out and explain to people how Logan fits into the timeline, because Fox had screwed it up so bad, people just couldn't figure it out on their own. You know, and so the, so when you take something like Legion, and then you inject it in there, is that going to bridge the gap between, like, you know, the events of Days of Future Past, or what led, you know, they between the X-Men bridge. Apocalypse? And, yeah, see, that's, that's what, they won't bridge a damn thing. See, nope. that's the problem, man. Like, you create this wildly incohesive universe. That's, that's why the MCU works well. Sure, we'd love to see Daredevil and Jessica Jones and Punisher crossover with Iron Man, but you go watch you go watch Daredevil, and it's like, yep, this is sometime after the events of Avengers. We know that because yeah. there's stuff in the background that tells you that, and they reference it as the event. So it comes out well because you at least, you at least have some idea of when it takes place. Yeah. But with Fox, it's just kind of disheveled. And it's like... Fox figures out how to make the movie just in time to make the next movie without ever thinking ahead, you know. And it's and it's like you know, like plan, you know, get things figured out. And that's what yep. kind of throws people off. But it's like, yeah, but with the idea of, of Legion, I mean, that like, dude, Jason's right. There's so many things you could do. Like, don't make New Mutants a movie. Make it a TV show. Like, I don't yeah, know if Fox right? has the Runaways. Make the Runaways a TV show. Like, there's a lot of different things you could do with making it, no, who, shows who that runaways? could be cohesive. Uh, it's a good question Hulu. because one Hulu of them is a mutant. Who has Hulu? runaways? Yeah, Hulu, Hulu has runaways. had runaways. That's right. Oh, Hulu's making. Oh, yeah. so well, that, that explains be, why I didn't see it. I like the way you said that. You're like, like <laughs> make runaways a show. Hulu has it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. no, let, me, well, let, me, let me tell you something yeah there's like one Hulu original that I care about and that's the show with Hulu, Hulu Laurie everything else is just bad no, no, so, I, 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 I like the one is with, pretty good which one? Actually. Oh, really? what is yeah it? based on the Stephen King book that's actually yeah Runaways going to oh. Hulu is not is not yeah. such a bad they've made a couple things they're, they're where Amazon was no they're where Netflix was about five years ago mm-hmm. is where Hulu is right now okay yeah. I'll take that that was a good place yeah, they're like, they're, they're, to to like they're already doing cards, it, but they Rob. will find. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, guys. Well, let me just rush over to Hulu and watch Hulu show. <laughs> I, I, I liked the Hulu show with the guy that is like a stoner and he can see dead people. It's like dead something. I watched that yeah. all the way through. <laughs> I, I forgot <laughs> about eleven twenty two sixty three. I saw eleven twenty two sixty three, and that was one of James Franco's best performances. Yeah, like, that was pretty. Yeah, hundred percent. I oh, yeah, that was the show. Amazing. How did it turn yeah. out? Was it good? <laughs> it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was good. All right, so let's talk about another topic so we can keep rolling through these. Uh, they had told that people reminded me in the chat, so I looked up exactly. I've one, never heard of this show. Two, had no idea it was being existing. Three, didn't know it was coming out tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> uh, Powerless, a story yeah. set in the DC universe. Oh, Ooh. yeah. 
What uh, the hell is this? I'm thinking, I'm thinking half season. It's got four episodes. That's it. Yeah, I'm thinking that's the wow. end. <laughs> it's the month Damn. of February event for NBC. No, uh, no, yeah, and we don't want to put our, our our friend from DC All Access, Jason Inman, in any kind of uh, uncomfortable position. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, we yeah. just went to their set. Oh, did, did you it? really? Uh, yeah. Was it cool? Oh, okay. did you, did it you looks like an office. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, know, I mean, I'm not saying good or bad. Uh, the only looking at the synopsis of the show because I didn't even know it existed. I just—it's one of those things that makes me just go, "Who thought of this? Like, why? Yeah. I don't see a reason for it." Not you know, I don't. It's not going to be good or bad. It's just like, why? Well, if you remember back in the day, and I don't know if they held back to this. Do you remember back, like a couple years back, that Damage Control was being developed? Yeah, and then yeah. and then like right around Damage Control. I think somebody else pitched this idea, and then Damage Control completely fell apart, and this show happened. Yeah, I I, yeah. I was I didn't hear about it falling apart, but I remember like the Damage Control pitch came out, and then I remember that DC pitched an insurance company show. Yeah, and I was that's like, what the show is. Yeah, and I was like, you're gonna have two shows about the same premise in this in two different universes. That sucks. And then nothing about Damage Control. The the only and, thing I can say about yeah. this is this I doesn't sound like a horrendous idea. But it's on NBC, which means it's not set in the CW oh universe, which God. is where this could have flourished. What is with these? Yeah. What, are, what is with these? This this div, the, dividing your house for no reason. Well, no, yeah. I mean, but this because this where concept you sell it. of all what's that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's there. Well, I'm I'm just saying, like this concept, I just feel like would have worked so well in the CW universe, where you're like, oh, here's the Flash, and crap went on. Now we got to go fix it, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. But, but you know what it is? Like CW doesn't make like the Office type shows. Like, yeah, Parks and no, Rec you're not right. Not a CW, but it would have been a great opportunity for CW to like try other avenues of shows yeah. like why not make us a, a Parks and Rec for the CW universe you yeah. know okay. I don't, keep keep I, have, I, have, Go ahead. I haven't seen this show I have not so I'm gonna watch it tomorrow with you guys yeah um the everything about the idea could work and could be funny as hell okay. um I haven't seen the show I don't know my my biggest worry about this is that this show could be really good. Like this show could turn into a Parks and Rec. This show could turn into a Superstore or something like that. Yeah, but it's, uh, but it's will NBC give it the time to develop into that? Well, okay, no, no. Now, normally I would agree with that, but I would harken back to Heroes. Like Heroes was huge when it first came out. There was a lot of anticipation. The problem with this is that no one knew. In fact, we just found. Oh, I just found out now. So, yeah. like, I mean, you don't, you don't say, like, hey, guys, here's this great big, huge, month-long event, and no one knows it's happening until the day before. Like, this is a very terrible way to advertise your product, yeah. but... I feel like that's um, definitely going to hurt this, the fact yeah. that, like, I mean, if, if us, like, so half of the people on this podcast... The base. Yeah, the, the core didn't demographic, know. half of the people on this podcast didn't even know this thing existed. <laughs> yeah. And I don't that, even that, know, do you think you would have known about it, Jason, if you didn't go to the set? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I can't say that. one way or the other, but uh, just I feel like there's like this friend on my shoulder that's reminding me that I I'm not really quite sure. But let's. I wish them. I wish them all the luck worry. in the world. We, we don't. I hope we don't it have works out. Anything to work I, with this. So. Yeah, I hope. I hope it. I hope it kicks ass. I hope it's awesome. I hope it's funny. I I don't know. I mean, yeah. honestly, like it's I rather would have gone with the damage control. As soon as I saw it on the bill, I was like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, I was like, "This could be so freaking good." Yeah. yeah. Um, honestly, I rather would have gone with like a uh, with a damage control show. Oh yeah. Like I rather would have preferred damage control because the see here was here's what you could do with a damage control show. You could literally take the entire plot for Civil War, like Damage Control Incorporated in Civil War, oh. rejigger it, and then just throw it out there. So instead One of tying season. into Civil War, yeah. it just it's like well, it's just a company that becomes corrupt because some guy screws it all up, you know. And then you just kind of go from there, and, and it would be all it'd be awesome, yeah. you know. Like like you get like the the people that clean up after the superheroes, and you could do that. Like you could literally tie the events into it. It's like yeah, man, like we're still cleaning up after all the Civil War. Yep. Non Nonsense and mess all that kind of stuff. But. Yeah. Oh well, you 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 literally each season is an event from Marvel, and like you make jokes like, "Oh, you should see our New York division." You know, yeah. like just that's all they say. Yeah, but if that's what the show is yeah. going to be, just call it Janitors of Shield, and let's see that. I'd watch. The, well, they made that awful. Well, they made that other show. Uh, the well, no. Um, I was going to say that web show that was like a parody of Shield show, and I was like, Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Interns thought, of Field. I thought you were going to say Ages of Shield. I'm like Ages of Shield. Okay, <laughs> the janitors yeah. of Shield. So let's I was move explaining on to the, the last topic that's on the list before we yeah. start having to ramble or talk about other things or take Q and A questions. Um, right. Marvel is officially going to release an actual reading order. 
Thank God. It only took 60 years for him to come up with the damn idea. <laughs> no, no, no. But hold on. Here's the thing. Because when I first heard about this, I thought the exact same thing. Thank God we have a 60-year reading order. From what I've read, that's not what this is. It's all, not. All it is is them telling you what order to read the volume ones that have recently come out. Good. <laughs> yeah. It's all, it's all about them. It's all about the all-new all different Marvel now, like the yeah. most recent stuff, and, and they're telling you how that fits together. Right. Because people okay, are like, well, wait a minute, sense, I'm though. noticing stuff is off. Right, because yeah. I, yeah. I, I read it, and they said they're going to explain Marvel Now, all new, all different Marvel, Secret Wars, and Marvel Now 2.0. And that, mm -hmm. like, those okay, are the well, only four events they're going to explain. Well, that works, because at least I know how to get my damn playlist in order instead of just kind of trying to wing it and play it by ear. <laughs> like, well, I think this goes. Like, I'm pretty sure this goes before this one. Well, hey, guys, the playlist for my channel for all new, all different Marvel, there anybody that cares enough to watch the damn shit, like, that'll be in order. <laughs> you know, so that'll be that'll be cool. Um, no, I mean, it's... it's Are you going to go back and put it in order because of this list? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the <laughs> list. Like, I'm literally just going to, like, follow You're the, the one guy. I love you. <laughs> hey, hey, I do, it, I do it when the fans let me know that my playlist got way out of order. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did okay. it once. Somebody hit yeah. me up with they're like, your Batman playlist is way out of order, and I had it on the auto ad, so anytime I would use the word Batman, it would just it throw just, this oh. in there. <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah. So it was like That's sixty funny. something videos, half of them didn't even have to do with the plot line, <laughs> and I had titled it Batman Chronological Order. <laughs> yeah. You can do auto ad? That's great. Yeah. yeah. You didn't know about I that? Need to learn that. Yeah, I did like, not know you could do that. No, you can. Yeah, yeah you, you, can, put, you can. You can put a thing in in YouTube Auto Ad. Just say like, include any video that has this, yeah, and it'll just add it to the playlist automatically. Cool. Huh. So that way you don't have to mess it at all. It'll just auto. Very so helpful. I have a Batman. Wall, very... I have a Batman all video playlist. Superman all video playlist. You know. Do have yeah. yeah. No, you know what Marvel needs? Marvel needs like they need to do what DC did after Zero Hour and just be like, here's a timeline of when events took place. Like yes. after all new, all different Marvel. Like that, that's what they need. Or even like going up and in, going into it. Like here's one thing. Ah, uh, Mick, Mick Hale. Wow, Mikhail Hadi. Ah, uh, Sploog. <laughs> what a name. That you is a Marvel... name there you have. <laughs> you know why Marvel won't do that? It's because they don't want to hear, because they, they know that they don't know it as well as the fans. And yeah. what they yeah. don't want to do is print things that would cost money and then have some jackass or a thousand of them say mm, these are out of order, and that's, here's all the inconclusive evidence that proves that's the that's the case. Like that they is don't exactly want exactly what happened when Nintendo said, "Here's how Zelda timeline works." Oh, Everyone yeah. fans are no. like, "No, that is not how it works." Well, yeah, yeah. Like, I, there are people who dedicated their lives to explaining how De the Zelda chronology works. Yeah, you know, like, but I, I, will, I will not even lie though. I would pay money, and Jason, use your your connections at DC to make this happen. Okay. I want a timeline correction to at least know where everything takes place during the DCU period. Like, how yeah. does that all fit together? <laughs> Which oh the DC oh the DCU yeah like oh okay the WoW U yeah because yeah, that yeah. that was confusing oh that is all hell it was yeah. like uh, <laughs> it was confusing I don't know <laughs> well, like here's the powerless Superman stories they're all happening together like yep. you know, there's no way he's running from one side of the world to the other how is this happening <laughs> yeah. Well, the best sometimes, part is sometimes just, that stuff. It's like where it, it comes to the thing where you just don't make a timeline. Like just yeah. you, you make your timeline. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's where head, head cannon comes into play. Really. Heavily. Yeah, exactly. Like there's there's so much, and I, I and I I'm one of those fans that's not bothered by that because I'm just like, yeah, I know. If you were to actually like put it all together with all the adventures that Superman's actually on, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah. He never sleeps. Even with his speed, it's impossible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now I remember, I remember a long, long, long ago, that, and you can probably still look it up. But there's an old Wolverine backup joke, where it explained how Wolverine yeah. was on so many teams, and it was literally the, like Sunday he's on the X Men, Tuesday, he, uh, Monday he's on the Avengers, Tuesday he's on X Force, Thursday he teamed up with uh, Spider Man. <laughs> you know, like it was an ongoing yeah. thing. And ever since then, I'm like, yeah, that's right. Why do I even care about the timeline? As long as in the end <laughs> it all gets there. <laughs> yep. Well, as long as I like what happened, and yeah. that's all that matters to me. Yeah. Yeah. So should we also mention um, what's it called? Yeah, like ten uh, minutes left, so whatever. All right, Marvel and the Square Enix deal. No, no, no. You okay? No. First of all, first of all, you guys aren't leaving out the RZA. All right. <laughs> oh God. We're not what? Fine. The RZA? RZA from the, the Wu Tang Clan is directing an episode of Iron Fist. Let's take some time and talk about that. My man, the real <laughs> cool. thing. Yes. My man. Yeah, well, we talked about it, and Rob got excited. I am, I am, I am excited about that. There Has we go. Has he directed before? 
No, well, he made a movie called uh, The Man in the Iron Fist. Oh, of it, I know that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's actually really fun. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, moving on. <laughs> actually, I did, I did yeah, not know that I, Crystal I Dynamics this, I'm, was I'm doing I'm probably the thing. biggest gamer out of our group. Rob, shut up. I know I am, and you suck. Uh, <laughs> um, so the Marvel Square Enix deal. I'm really worried this is going to be like the last Marvel game deal where we got champions and a bunch of other app games, and we got a Connect title, and <laughs> we got a bunch of other shitty games that were garbage. Yeah. I... They're obviously, Marvel and Disney are finally like, hey, we want real games. So that's why I'm hoping this is something. Because one, yes. Square Enix is not really known for their app game stuff. They've got a bunch, but they're not as well known as their like, Final Fantasy. They're, they're and, Tomb Raider, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they got Square Enix and Crystal yeah, Dynamics. Yeah. So Crystal Dynamics is the Tomb mm-hmm. Raider guys. Yeah. Um, and, on and both top those of that, groups are involved. Well, and, I, and on top of that, I believe, at least in my opinion, that them repenning the deal with Capcom to bring the next Marvel vs. Capcom game kind of yes. proves that they're like, we want games. Yeah. Only without any X-Men in it, though. Yeah. Because if you look at that, if you look at the roster for that Marvel Capcom 4 or whatever, it, it's it got no X-Men in it. Yeah, really? You know that what, sucks. Well, you know what, it though? Really I played sucks. a shit ton of Marvel vs. Capcom, and the only one I ever used was Wolverine. Swiss cheese! <laughs> <laughs> Pineapple surprise! <laughs> I will say, y- if you have the rights to the characters in your video games... Just put the damn characters in the goddamn game. Like, don't play this happy horse shit where, oh, but they got this. If you can make a comic book in which the X-Men and the Avengers can team up and fight Galactus, goddamn put the fucking comic out and don't put us through this shit anymore. I'm sorry. I'm just so sick of this, like, playground nonsense about, like, who's got what and who can afford that. Like, I'm sorry that Wolverine can't be on the Avengers, you jackasses, but, like, get over it. (laughs) Just get get over it. I, I can't handle it anymore. I'm just like, just stop. Yeah. Stop. No, I, no, and uh, and say so, uh, for say first up, since Sensationionic, uh, no, it has not been officially released. We're going off of the rosters we have seen of the images, yes. and it's all mm-hmm. the current movie people. So it's like Captain Marvel and stuff like that. We haven't yeah. seen X Men. That doesn't mean they're not in there, but it definitely steers towards oh. probably not in there. You know, oh, I you know, guarantee the- you. I'll, I'll bet Old Man Logan is in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know it's one of these things where like when you look back at Marvel and you're just like man the best Marvel game of like the last five years has been Lego Marvel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're just uh, like it, it, but also also at the same time if if Warner Brothers can figure out Batman Arkham Knight and Injustice there's no reason that Marvel can't literally just like what why couldn't we create a Wolverine game that is basically Batman Arkham Knight or even a Captain America game that's basically Cap- Batman Arkham Knight. Like, literally reskin the damn thing. It would I be mean, an amazing game. Well, here's the thing. Uh, the Wolverine origin game rocks. Yeah, that was, I, I, I did play that. I thought it was good. And yeah. the Captain America game is a reskinned Wolverine game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get those so he's games. trying to claw people? Like, he's, he's the, the shield said. But, like, the... I will say, I liked the Captain America First Avenger game. Kind of. Uh... A Captain America game by itself is kind of like, all right, well, that's kind of boring. Um, I'm excited by these this Square Enix deal because, like, it's hopefully going to be kind of like in the style of the Tomb Raider game. Um, yeah, and, and which, the last two Tomb Raider games were amazing. I know nobody's really ever played them, hence why they're so poor in sales. But right? They're amazing. <laughs> it's because yeah. the time yeah. of Tomb Raider is kind of done. But if they, if they pull out that new movie, it might come back. But... You know, I disagree. I, Sal, you said before that a Captain America game wouldn't be that interesting. Think about a Captain America game in the style of, like, Metal Gear Solid. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, like a Winter Soldier really type amazing. game? Like, yeah, I get you there. That's but, cool. No, you, make it, you make it so that he can, like, it's a buddy thing. So you can co-op with someone on Winter Soldier. There so, you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd take that in heart. Yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. Mm. I mean, yeah. there's a lot so of Who do we talk to to make that happen? Who, who do we pitch this game to? I don't know. To? Video game division is weird. <laughs> I've been. I've got uh, Kevin yeah, Feige's phone number. Call it up. Oh yeah, no yeah, problem. Awesome. Let me give him a call. Yep. Uh, yeah, well, I'll call him right now. I'm good. <laughs> Live on the show. Hey, Kevin, what's up, man? <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Feige. <laughs> Did we mention that we're award winning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> leading, yeah. Cool, you'll love it. And we love zebras. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're big. Well, three, we love three quarters of us enjoy zebras. zebras. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as the games go, though, uh, and for the people who are like trying to uh, defend cons as the champions. Every any oh, I know I don't talk to Jason that often uh, off of that podcast, but the other two guys will vouch that I play the hell out of app games all the freaking all right. time. 
And it's probably the worst part about having expendable income from the military sending me my VA checks, where I just go, okay. <laughs> and I just dump it into these stupid things. But Contest of Champions has a very hard wall where if you don't dump money in or like 40 mm -hmm. hours per character, you're fucked. And that's yeah. the problem with that one. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't realize that Crystal Dynamics... The DC gonna, Legends game, I, for the record, is a fun idea, but they put it out too early. I might, there's just not enough content. It needs more stuff yeah. to do. Um, I agree with when you I, on that When one. I first yeah. heard about it, I was like, I was like, really? Like an adventure game? And I was like, well, that's cool, I guess. But then I found out Crystal Dynamics to make it, and I was like, well, I'm actually a lot more excited than I was before. Yeah! But here's Crystal the Dynamics. kicker, though. Think about this, though. And here's one thing that I've never seen anyone mention, because all they said was that here's the new project. They didn't name it as Avengers. They didn't name it what no. it was. For all you know, they've been penned for a six-game deal, and that's each of the games. Yes. It's true. Yeah. It's a fair point. I mean, well, the, 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 the next end Ultimate logo Alliance is... And we're all going to be super excited. <laughs> Ultimate Alliance 3 would be awesome. That's what I mean. Like, it's the next Ultimate Alliance. That would be great. Uh, I want to yeah. do something new. Yeah. I do want to I do want to see something more. Ultimate Alliance was fun, but, like, I would like to see something more in line with, like, a like a Metal Gear Solid or a, or a Tomb Raider type game. Mm. I will say, did did is it confirmed? Did Brie Larson do the voice for that, for that commercial? Did she? I don't know. That's I, the like I heard people were like because Brie Larson had retweeted the, uh, the 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 teaser and everything and people were like yeah. I think that is Brie Larson Captain Marvel doing the voiceover for this video game and I'm like is that true is that if that's the case is she playing a voice in the game and if that's the case are they getting everyone from the MCU to play voices in the game like there's a lot of speculation I think that we get the next piece of information in two years so I'm looking forward to talking about that oh again. No, yeah I, I, I'm, gonna, I've, I'm calling it now I know what this game is it's Marvel Ultimate Alliance three Civil War two. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Your goal is to beat Ulysses with each of the characters and their own stories. Ulysses. I hope we never hear that name again. Oh, we will. He'll come back. Remember, he's a cosmic entity now because yeah, reasons. Yeah, Ewing will use him or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope The not. ultimates have to go fight against him. <laughs> <laughs> That'll take. I'll take that if they kill him. But, if uh, they kill him? Yeah. Uh, but that, 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 I guess that's all the news, huh? Yeah, well, that's pretty much we're it. We're worried we wouldn't get it all in. We're in a slow news period. Until we get to WonderCon, get ready. <sighs> yeah. When is WonderCon? Uh, beginning first weekend of April. Oh. You know, oh, you know, so we, we got like three months. Anything in Emerald City? Oh, well, we might, no. but like generally the big dogs wait till WonderCon. Yeah. yeah. It's, I think it's why the major creators like all go to Emerald City in Baltimore, because they're like, shh. <laughs> like, no, it can yeah. <laughs> The calm before the storm. Yeah. Yeah. I well then, know. I guess. Oh, we can, last thing, and then we'll head, and then we'll close the show. I guess. Uh, Black Manta has been cast. That's right. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Good for I'm him. I'm excited about. I'm excited to see this this Aquaman. I saw the greatest meme ever, though. The actor who I never can pronounce his name, but he played. Uh, you know, the, the, the you know we all know Aquaman now. The humongous dude that's playing Aquaman. Oh, and Jason he had Momoa. Two bodyguards with him. And yeah. oh, I gotta find it. I yeah. gotta find the meme. Oh, I, I saw that. that yeah, image. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like we all want to get to the point where we're bigger than our bodyguards. Yeah, or something yeah, like that. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah. th that moment when your bodyguards look like mini bosses to get to you. Or <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what it was. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, so I saw good. that. I'm like, I'm like, what? What role do those guys serve? Like, yeah, they just, well, just they just armor. They're just is like, just like does he just like pick them up by their feet and just swing them like baseball bats? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> <what it's>... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much yeah. it. There's not much going on with that. We just know he's been announced. Like, we have an Aquaman. Uh, you, you know, know what? We have every, like... every announcement they make about this Aquaman movie... Is good. Uh, is good. I'm liking it. And more and more, I'm like, God damn. Next year, we, we can have a fucking awesome Aquaman movie and confirm... That we are now in the bizarro timeline. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, they can't get Superman right, but this Aquaman movie was the tits. Like, <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Wait, okay, who do you guys think that's going to do for the name of? Because Aqu Aquaman is just nothing but a household joke at the moment, thanks to Super Friends and Robot Chicken and all. I don't that think crap. this movie will fix it, but I think it will do. It will. It will be a. You'll get. You'll get extreme jokes on both sides of the spectrum, and that'll be it. Like yeah. it'll just create another joke meme for Aquaman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think Aquaman will be solid episode. now. Yeah. Uh, Alternate well, Realms of Rock is not playing Shazam. The Rock is playing Black Adam. Evil yes. Shazam. Right. <laughs> Evil Shazam. <laughs> That's, That's who he was when I was growing up. Like, oh, it's, I'm like really anti-Shazam. That's what we're doing. Like as a child, that's who I thought Black Adam was. Just like another <laughs> Shazam that was bad. I'm like, so basically he's Negaduck. Thanks. <laughs> uh, no, all right, I mean, yeah. So, uh, oh, good, Rob. 
No, it's fine, Benny. You've been interrupting me the whole fucking show. It's fun. I'm just going to hang up yeah. on you now. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, I was going to say, so, I mean, that pretty much brings the podcast to a close today. Um, don't forget, if you want to chat with us after the show and between the shows, I don't think we'll be around there much after the show today, but we do talk in there between the shows. Um, you can go to our Discord, and that is the link to that. That is the official weekly poll Discord. Me and Rob frequent in there. Sal doesn't even know it exists. I am on there. I have a comic pop Discord, you jackass. I'm such an old man. I've never used Discord. Uh, it's going to be the new Skype in- unless Microsoft pays a shit ton of more money. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which Microsoft will probably do. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's the Discord right there. Uh, we also, just in case you came in late, we were the winners of the podcast, best podcast from Bleeding Cool. So that was a big Woo! announcement at the beginning. Um, thank you, thank you. We do upload this to YouTube. It goes to Comic, T- Comic Pop and Comic TV. That's where it goes. That's right. Um, and uh, why don't you go ahead and close out the show by letting people who just joined us late about, the, about your comic that you have written and are getting published, Jason. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I, we co read a five issue comic book series. If you haven't heard, Jupiter Jet. It's on Kickstarter right now. We already hit our goal, but we could always use more. We got more stretch goals because we have a five page backup by somebody who has drawn on DC Rebirth The Flash. I can't say his name, and we're not going to announce it until we hit the stretch goal. So we need your help there. And for anybody that at the weekly poll that comes over and donates, jupiterjetcomic.com, donate $5 or more. I'll send you a comic book from my personal collection with a note about why I sent it to you. And uh, just make sure you tell me that you're from the weekly poll. But there's a girl with a jetpack, and she punches evil bald men in the face. You want to read it. It's awesome. <laughs> awesome. That I, sounds I mean, awesome. I donated it. Yeah. Rob and Sal did. It does you look did. amazing. It's not just – Jason didn't just come on here to get you guys to try and pitch into a comic. He's like, oh, it's, it's a really crappy one, but I want your money. No, it actually, it looks amazing. <laughs> no, no. It's really got a great story. Send me your money, okay, man. Okay. Don't even, don't even <laughs> deny that there are some shitty-ass Kickstarters on there. Oh, I will terrible. say. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I mean, we we designed our Kickstarter based a lot on like what we saw other people doing, and we were like, let's not do that. Right. Don't exactly. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moby um, the potato salad guy. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably do a minor Q and A on Discord, Moby, but uh, we'll do it through text. We have we have actually have a couple meetings after this. So, yes. all right, guys. Thank you for joining us for today's show. Don't forget to check us out on. Uh, where does the thing get uploaded, Sal? Why don't you let them know? Thank- it comes up on Comic Pop. Go to comicpop.net. Check out this show on usually between Thursday and Friday. Uh, and then it comes up again on the Weekly Poll official YouTube channel, which is on Comic TV. Uh, I think it's youtube.com slash comic story and TV or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, something like that. But I always <laughs> leave a link to the channel in the description box below the video when it's uploaded on Comic Pop. So check it out. All right, sounds good. We're also on iTunes. We're also on SoundCloud, guys. And this entire thing exists because of you. So thank you all. You've helped us make an incredible podcast that now wins awards. We can eventually Yeah, make sure you say it's award winning. You yeah. guys are We're now proud the of award winning yeah. weekly poll. Thanks to you. Woo. Not us. You guys made it that way. <laughs> Discord link one last time. There it is, guys. All right. Alan Woo. Scott. Uh, with that, we will Alan Scott out of here. Alan Scott. <laughs>